announcements today, which I hardly ever get to do. And um, I'm not sure if it's because we have eight of them today that um, I get to do them because my big thing is getting through announcements as quickly as possible. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Um, if you've got something that makes noise, please turn it off or down. And this is the part where you say, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, if there are any first time guests here today, if you just raise your hand, I have a little packet to give you. All right, we have some packets down front.
instead of the later 6.30, so that we have some time to be outside. And uh, been working, and Jeff has been working very hard on the gardens with this, so um, I get to see some pretty stuff, too. She so. points and says, dig here, geek boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 I hope you can all join, and I'll start getting names. Uh, if you want to let me know today, that would be great. I can start getting names and somebody to be here. Thank you. Personal invitation to the Last Supper. The first supper. The first Last Supper. The Last Supper. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna miss it anyway. Um, we have a special announcement from Dave. Dave, would you come up? Dave is from our friends up the hill at St. Anthony's. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Good morning. It's good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here with you. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation uh, to let us do this announcement. We were here uh, several months ago as a, a dialogue to learn about interfaith. Some of you I recognize your face. Uh, you either came to St. Anthony's or, or I saw you here or so. And I, I like the drums. Uh, we have drumming sometimes at St. Anthony's. So makes me feel at home. We are having a couple of events. Uh, one is in your, they're both are in your bulletin, uh, one in July, but I was mainly here to talk about, we're having a summer solstice concert. It's the first that we've ever done like this. Uh, it's on June the 21st. It's a Saturday. It's at 11 o'clock. Uh, it's not going to last, run a long time. But we wanted to invite you. We want to open our doors, uh, not only to members of the parish, but to the whole community. Uh, since we feel like you are certainly friends, we wanted to invite you to come. Uh, afterwards, we're going to have a cookout. Um, you don't have to bring anything. You don't have to bring a covered dish. Uh, it will be supplied. Uh, it won't be anything fancy, but we wanted to invite you and hope Many of you can come. Thank you. Thank you. That, that is great. Um, and there's more information on the salmon in insert in your program um, of a couple of the programs that St. Anthony's is having. Uh, now, before we go into our community chance, I believe the after service lunch bunch is meeting today at Bonefish Grill. All right, anybody want to go to Bonefish Grill? Brunching today. You are a part of me. You 
just go into prayer for a moment, and knowing the power <laughs> and the presence of the divine is here and now. It's creative. It is life. It is choice. It is purpose. And knowing that, I set our intention this morning to be that, that creative spiritual community that we are. Mm. And in so doing, we rest into this moment, this time together, this place of celebration, knowing that it is all good. It is already done in the mind of God. And we let it be. And we sit and give thanks for the blessing, the blessing of this time together, the blessing of the music, the blessing of Audrey and Kimberly blessing of the drums, the blessing of the message through Reverend Linda. Oh, and that blessing, that gift of those who care for and teach our children downstairs. Blessed with all of this and so much more, we give thanks for it. We allow it to be. So Reverend Dee asked me last Sunday when I came if I was going to be able to speak this week. And I wasn't sure at that point. And then I looked at the title and told him, yes, I need to speak. The title for today is The Power of Choice. And I have a lot of choices to make. And I have made a lot of choices since May the 21st. I was actually here at the Wednesday evening service when all this happened. It was an event up in the Troy Tip City area that they called on the Weather Channel a train of thunderstorms. And it was literally a path of thunderstorms <coughs> that went through a relatively narrow area, one behind the other. And I think there were as many as six of them that came through. They were saying that Tip City got at least six inches of rain in an hour and a half to two hours. The neighborhood that I live in, one of my friends had given her nephew who lives in that area a seven inch rain gauge for Christmas and he called and told her that it did not have an overflow on it and he was watching the water overflow out of it. My daughter, who lives six houses down from where I was supposed to be living and I'm down in her basement, uh, had a bucket in her backyard that was not close to anything. It was an empty bucket. She said she had at least 10 to 12 inches of water. We are talking about an amazing event the neighbors next to me, who were also flooded, had received a letter on Monday, and this happened on Wednesday, that they were no longer in the 100-year floodplain, that it had been over 100 years since it had flooded, and we were now up to the 500-year floodplain. I think that's since been changed. <laughs> and there was at least six inches of water in my garage and anywhere from one to three inches in my house which is why everything has been literally moved out. The good thing is, when this is all done, my house will be renovated all at once, which before it would have been done more piecemeal than what it's going to be done. In the long run, it will be great. And that's what I am choosing to know. It is a choice. I know several people have commented and said that I'm a very strong person to have dealt what I've dealt with relatively calmly and relatively without as much stress as it could have been. But this is definitely one of those events that I have come to know over the last few years that some stuff just is. And this just is. Is it fair? Not my frame of reference. Is it what I wanted to happen? No. And I have asked myself several times, if I believe it is done unto me as I believe, what did I believe to bring this forward? And I have chosen not to go that way. Because all that does is beat me up. And I don't need to be beat up. I need to be as positive as I can and as willing to make decisions as I can. We had put down engineered bamboo hardwood floors that had been finished for two weeks. 
and I still have the payments on them. Um, they were in the dump within 48 hours of the flood. All 2100 square feet of them. And I, I, I breathed in them to some degree, but they scratched a whole lot easier than I wanted them to. <laughs> so they're not going back in. But I'm okay with that. And so, you know, it's looking at the things that are a gift and being willing to move beyond whatever it is. And being grateful that my daughter has a very large basement. I would like to be grateful that she has a very yappy Pomeranian. <laughs> He's pushing several minutes at the moment. Um, including her husband's, as well as my husband's. He doesn't, they knew when they adopted him, he had been rescued from a puppy mill. And that he had most likely been abused by men. So the male energy really sends him off. Fortunately, my little grandson, who's three, doesn't project the same energy. The dog likes him. I found a website this morning that I thought was really interesting. It's called wellbeingalignment.com. And they had an article called The Power of Choice. And I could not find the name of the person who writes for this blog. But it's a good site. And the article said, so the first step in how to be happy is to choose happiness. No matter what, I'm going to be happy. No matter what the situation I face today, I will find something about each of them to be happy about. Even if it is something tiny, I will focus on that tiny thing and keep my radio tuned to that station, knowing that the positive energy will grow by feeding it with my attention. In every event, in every situation we face in our life, we have a choice. We always have a choice. And sometimes we choose to do nothing. And that's still a choice. And sometimes we choose to go the negative route. And that's still a choice. We were extremely lucky with the flood. And you say, how could that be? Well, for one thing, I had fought tooth and nail not to have flood insurance, and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was going through the process, because the flood insurance thing delayed the closing of the house three times. And I kept thinking, what is going on here? Is the universe trying to tell me that I'm not supposed to be in that house? What is going on with this experience? And I'm, I'm very clear, even at this point, we are to be in that house. I mean, I've never had a house call my name as I was driving down the street before. This one did. We are to be in the house. And it is, we love it. We love the neighborhood. We have absolutely awesome neighbors. But I couldn't figure out what was making everything so difficult. And it may well have been my resistance to paying the premium for a year on flood insurance. And I will tell you that I could stand in any spot in my house and see more than $1,300 worth of damage in any direction. So it was well worth every penny of it. One neighbor on one side who had more water in her house than I did had no flood insurance. The neighbor on the other side did have flood, they're the ones who got the 100 year flood plan letter. They had flood insurance, They their basement flooded, and they had a different company than we did, and they're having a problem with the basement smelling really funky. I don't have a basement, but my house is extremely next morning, and having fans and de dehumidifiers set up within an hour and a half. And my house began to dry out. And then they came in and cut the wall board up almost immediately. I was very, very blessed by daughters who made me make phone calls on Wednesday night instead of waiting till Thursday morning. 
when I would have been one of the 55 calls waiting for Terry to answer instead of Terry and his crew being standing in my house. I made the choice to do what my daughters forced me to. <laughs> and they were right. They're very smart young women. I'm very, very blessed. So one of the things Holmes says You know that there is a God power at the center of everyone's being. A power that knows neither lack, limitation, fear, sickness, disquiet, nor imperfection. But because we are individuals, we build a wall of negative thoughts between ourselves and this perfection. The wall keeps us from our greater good, but it is built by mental blocks. Crammed together by fear and unbelief and mixed with the mortar of negative experience. It is not necessary that impoverishment and pain accompany you in your experience through life. It is not necessary for fear and pain and negative experience to accompany us through life. It is our choice. There is only one person that controls this organ that sits between your ears, and that's the person that that head sits on the shoulders. It is our beliefs and our willingness to move beyond whatever our personal experience has been up until this point that controls how we feel and how we think and what our emotions are. We can choose to be happy no matter what is going on around us. We can choose to be positive no matter what is going around us. I think Reverend D shared last week that um, <coughs> when Paul Scopster, who is the Vice President of our Council um, had his heart experience recently. That the doctor told Helen that she was, the doctor said that they were pretty sure Paul was going to be fine because he never shut up through the whole procedure. <laughs> and as I know Paul, and I saw him that day shortly after it happened, and I saw Helen that day too, and, and someone is has sent something out that Helen said that it was the worst day of her life. That is not the experience I had when I was with either one of them. Dude, <coughs> Paul's room in intensive care was this has got to be the healthiest guy in intensive care. <laughs> this has got to be the most positive person on this floor. This is someone, both he and Helen both, who knew the power of their thought and who had chosen not to look back on what had happened in the last <coughs> six hours, but to look forward knowing their wholeness and moving forward into a space of health, wholeness, and vitality, no matter what the physical appearance was going on, or what they were hooked up to, or what it <coughs> looked like. Paul was, Paul was Paul, and he was still talking, which was great. I mean, it is awesome to walk into that level of perfection in a situation that can drain everything you've got. And how many of you have ever walked into a hospital room or walked into a hospital and just felt the energy and the positiveness of who you are just literally draining out of you through that experience because of the fear and negative thoughts and everything else that goes with so many hospital situations? Paul and Helen moved beyond that and truly stepped into owning their experience, owning their feelings, and owning their whole part of that experience. They were not going to let a negative experience and negative beliefs and fear negate their knowingness of the wholeness of who they are. And when I walk into my home, 
and see everything literally ripped out of it, except the cabinet wall, I mean the walls on the cabinet, cabinets on the walls. I can choose to be scared about what's going to happen and how it's going to come together and oh my gosh, what if I don't have the right company making these changes and what if I make a poor choice and what if, what if, what if, what if. Or I can walk in and take a deep breath and know that I am absolutely divinely guided in this situation. And that I see the power, the passion, the wisdom, the wholeness of God, not only in me, but every person who walks into my house. Preach room. The man who did the demolition on my house is a very conservative Baptist minister. But you could feel his energy when he walked into that room. You could feel the positiveness of who he was being there in that moment. And, and I knew that he had my highest good and the highest good of my home in his hand. And he knew it. And he embraced it. And he allowed that energy that is the truth of who he is to permeate my home. And so did Terry, the, the water guy. That energy of the lead contractors is so powerful that I can feel it. And I know I am in good hands. There may be times when I become frustrated. I look, I'm looking at Julie right now, and she knows how many times I put on the prayer list during that two or three weeks about how bad I did not want flood insurance. <laughs> how much prayer I had going around, and anybody who saw me at conference was sick of hearing that. But it was all in divine order. It didn't fit my picture. Believe me, none of this fits my picture. But I know that we move forward from this. I know, as Holmes says, and as the Bible said, it is done unto me as I believe. And I know from this point forward, I am seeing an absolutely beautiful home filled with love and filled with wonderful people who walk through the doors. And one thing I am so grateful for is that this happened when I owned this house because we are the second owners of this house. The woman who built it is 99 years old. Can you imagine the devastation if she had ever realized what happened to the home that she built and the memories that her family had there? It would have, I mean, as devastating it is, it, as it is, or it can be for me to walk through that house, can you imagine what it would have been for Gladys? And I am so grateful that she was spared this experience. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I really do. I know that timing is everything, and this is part of it. <coughs> we all have the right to make a choice. And even more than that, we're required to do so. And sometimes, as I said earlier, we make a choice by doing nothing. That is still a choice. It is like when we are given the opportunity to vote on our political leaders. We can either go into the polls and make a choice for who we think is the best person to govern us, or we cannot show up and not vote. The thing is, I personally believe if you do not make the choice to vote, you cannot complain about the decisions made by political people. I don't, not everyone believes that, but I do. So I am willing to make a choice. I am willing to state who I think has the best opportunity to govern us in a way that I think is for our highest good. And I have the right to complain. I didn't negate my right. But that is true in so many areas of our lives. We can make a choice. I mean, every time you get in the car and turn the key, you make a choice. Am I going to go somewhere today? 
When I get to the end of my driveway, am I going to go right or am I going to go left? Where do I choose to go first? We make a choice every time we do anything. We make a choice when we get up in the morning. Have you ever noticed that if you get up, shall we say, on the wrong side of the bed, in a very negative attitude, that your whole day tends to go that way? Unless we make a conscious effort to change how we feel in that moment. I'm going to give you a tool right now that I haven't tried, but I, not consciously tried, but I know that the whole idea behind it works. And it's called the 17 second rule. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to spend the next 17 seconds concentrating and thinking on happy thoughts, or positive thoughts. So get a positive thought or positive idea in your mind. And just let it be there. And just dwell on it. Just feel it in every fiber of your being. Feel a difference in your energy. It can be a positive thought, it can be something as simple as thinking about the smile of a loved one. My three year old grandson smiles with every cell of his body, and just seeing his smile is enough to make me smile. And we do that. I mean, something as simple as concentrating on the smile of a loved one or just something that just opens your heart and just taking that 17 seconds to think about that will allow you to shift beyond whatever is troubling you in that moment and allow you to be able to see that glimmer of good that's going on. And sometimes the only glimmer of good we may find is this too shall pass. And that is good. That whatever the experience is, it's that moment. And we will move beyond that moment into the next moment. And if we can step into that next moment in a place of choosing happiness or choosing peace or choosing love, whatever it is, we move into that next space. We move into that next moment. There is only one person who can determine whether you are happy or unhappy, whether you feel peaceful or unpeaceful, or without peace. And that person is you. No one can steal your happiness. No one can steal your peace unless you give it to them. And if you are in a situation where you feel like someone has taken your peace or your happiness, you can take it back. And maybe something as simple as a 17 second rule of concentrating on something that brings you joy, something that brings you peace, something that allows you to move mentally and emotionally beyond whatever is going on, maybe just enough to do it. And if you can go for more than 17 seconds, it expands exponentially. And I'm sure being in a room of this many people doing that 17 second event expanded it even more. Because when two or more are gathered, amazing things happen. Let's just take a deep breath. And I'm going to read the quote that I started with again. So the first step on how to be happy is to choose happiness. 
touch your heart and silently say with me, no matter what, I am going to be happy. No matter what situation I face today, I will find something about each of them to be happy about, even if it is something tiny. I will focus on that tiny thing and keep my radio tuned to that station, knowing that positive energy grows by feeding it with my attention. <laughs> there is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is only one God expressing through and as me, through and as every situation in my life. I am one with the infinite because there is only one. And as I know this for me, as I know my oneness, I know this oneness for each of these loved ones and every being on this planet. And I know for each of us that this day, this week, this year, this lifetime, we choose to focus on a life filled with peace, love, joy, happiness, wisdom, abundance, oneness. And in every situation, we turn away from the negative experience and focus on our oneness of spirit, knowing that God shows up when we look. God shows up in every situation. When we release the walls of fear and negativity that we have built, and allow them to dissolve and dissipate. We feel our oneness. We feel the love, joy, peace, wisdom that is God, that is spirit in this situation, in this moment, and every moment. We breathe it in. We breathe it out. We celebrate it. And knowing it is good and knowing it is done in gratitude and thanksgiving, I lovingly release these words to spirit as together we say, Amen. So
we have Libby has come up so we can acknowledge her graduation from grade school to middle school.